Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's May week two and of course this is where things are slightly changing this month. Um, I'm combining um, usual scraps and um, junky tub into one which I'm calling re Recycle, Repurpose and Reuse. So of course this is the first project um, this week. I'm going to continue working in my usual scraps um, journal but you can interpret this prompt in any way you like so if you want to alter something like a glass jar then you know that would fall under this category it just means that we're not repeating the prompt and doing it twice which has been um, requested by some people um, in the in the group so I am going to have a quick flick through my journal I think I've got um, an idea where I want to start and I find that when I'm working in my scrap journal I just start somewhere and it gets my creative juices flowing and one thing just leads to another that's just how it works um, for me so what I want to do um, this week is work on the inside of this piece here this page here I absolutely love the cover and I really don't know whether I want to do anything with that because I just think it's beautiful I love the colors but I do want to do something with the inside so I'm just going to go and grab some paint I've just grabbed some iridescent gold paint this is the Pebio studio acrylics paint and I'm just going to add a layer over the background here so I'm just going to put some on like this and we'll just give it a coat now of course I've got some um, marks here and those are showing through but you know that's absolutely fine um, because you won't be able to see it by the time I've added some more layers how my page looks after two coats of gold paint and what I am going to do now I've got a clean piece of paper I'm going to use some of this scotch removable glue stick um, and I'm going to add it all over the back of my piece because what I want to do is glue this down um, to this piece of paper to stop it moving and I'm going to apply quite a bit to the edge as well because I don't want um, the paint necessarily that I'm going to apply next to seep um, over over the top so I'm just going to put that down, press it down like this with a microfiber cloth and hopefully um, that will hold it in place um, so that I can work on it some more and stop anything seeping underneath and you know if it does it it does I'll deal with that and um, you know it was obviously meant to be. I'm going to try and copy the weathered door from this month's mood board. Um, here we go so that's what it looks like and so I've got some golden um, in teal um, you don't have to follow the mood board if you don't want to it's not a requirement but I just like to have something in my scrap journal as a reminder of what we've been doing so you know that's just um, what I like to do but as I say you don't have to use the mood board other than for, for week one unless I've specified otherwise so I've got some PVA glue um, I did a crackle technique video earlier on this week um, and I want to try and create that effect here I'm using PVA glue because um, that tends to go more um, in ridges as opposed to an overall crackle effect and so that just happens to be the look that I'm going for so I'm just covering the whole of this um, in PVA glue you need quite a quite a thick layer so I'm just going to add a little bit more there we go that should that should be enough so I'm just applying this all over hence the reason that I wanted to glue this down to this piece of paper so that it didn't seep underneath I might get some seepage as I say and you know if I do I do that's um that's fine so there we go so I am now just going to rinse off my paintbrush and then I shall apply some paint so my paintbrush has now been rinsed out and I'm just going to apply some of this paint across um, my page Oop, plenty right there we go and then I'm just going to drag it I'm going to turn it this way up I hope you can see that and I'm just going to drag it gently as I did in the video I did the other day 
across very gently um, across the glue um, and as I said in the video I'll leave the link to the video that I'm referring to in the description box below for anybody who hasn't um, seen it uh, but in the video I sort of said that you know you need to go with a light touch here because you don't want to um, mix the paint and the PVA glue to together um, you're just trying to get um, a reaction so just gently going over this, I'm going to turn that round the other way now. And then I'm just going to have to set this to one side now to dry and for the crackle um, to start working and start taking effect. There we go. So we'll see if I have as much success with this today as I did in the video in the week. Right, don't overwork it, that's the important thing. So I'm just going to set this off to one side now to dry. Whilst I'm waiting for my crackle um, effect to dry, um, I just want to stamp um, this bird here. This is from the Art by Marlene collection. Um, so what's this bird called? Um, stamp BM19. Um, so Art by Marlene by Studio Light. It's this, this bird here. Um, and I'm using this card here. Now, this was um, a piece left over from when we were doing the Artist Inspired last year. So again, using my scraps, I want to use my um, stamping tool for, for this, my stamping platform. This is the Tonic Studio one, um, just because I want to make sure that I get um, a good image. I want to use this blue here and I want some of the red and some of the, the gold. So I think I want it to go there like, like that. Um, so make sure I've got that firmly in place and I'm going to stamp this with some embossing ink. I'm going to emboss it. So I'm just going to go over and make sure I get um, a good amount of ink on here and I'm going to stamp this twice I think. So I'm just going to press down, make sure I get a good amount of embossing ink and then I'm going to go over it again. And then I'm going to reach for some black embossing powder. So there we go, let's just go over that again. So that should that should do that. I'm just going to take this off and I've decided that I'm going to use gold embossing powder. I'll sort that out in a in a second. So I've got a piece of paper here. Let's have a look and let's see if we can do this in gold. Now this is the chunky gold. Um, I, mm, I'm wondering whether I should perhaps have fine. Mind, I'm going to use some fine gold. Um, I just hope I've got enough. I'm running out of uh, this. I meant to get some more whilst I was at the craft fair last weekend and I completely forgot to add it to my to my list. So let's have a look and see. See I've missed a bit there. And because I haven't got very much left, I can pour it back in and go over it again. So you'll start, start to see this melt in a minute and turn a lovely gold. Here we go. That's my bird. And I'm just going to fussy cut that out. And I think that will look really nice against the blue or teal background. There we go. That's peeled off nicely. And I don't appear to have any damage on the back either. I'm not sure whether this blue was here before. Um, or whether it spilled over but you know anyway it matches so that's absolutely fine now I want to grunge up the edges so I'm going to use some uh, folk art antiquing polish and I'm just going to tip it onto a little bit onto um, one of these sponges here um, so there we go that should be fine and I'm just going to go around the edge just a just a little bit here we go we'll do it like do it like this I don't want too much, um, but I just want to grunge it just a, just a little bit. Do you know, I really like how that's going in. I'm going to go over the whole of it, you know. Decision made. I know I've sort of put the gold on, but um, that's fine. We'll just grunge it up just a little. I really like that. There we go. Isn't it funny how you sort of have a plan in your head? And, um, and then something else sort of springs to mind. You can still actually see um, the gold, so that's, um, that's cool, but that's just dirted and grunged it um, up a bit. Oh, that's much better, I love that. 
I'm just going to take a slightly damp baby wipe and just take a little bit of it off just so that it's not quite so so streaky. There we are. Right, okay, I've got this um, stamp here. It was um, one that I got last year from the range and I just want to um, use some of these music notes. Now, how do I want it to go? I want it that way up. I've got my um, stays on. No, I haven't. My archival um, ink pad as well. Um, is it the right way up? Let's have a let's have a look. I'm going to use this area here, and I just want to apply just some little bits of stamping, just in a couple of places like this. I like that. I think that looks really good, and I like the way that I've got um, a bit of the treble clef as well. Um, I'm going to turn it round the other way, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing now in this um, corner corner here. I really like that. I'm playing with the music notes and I do want to add um, a bit of this filigree, would you call it, um, as well. Just, just a little bit, just to add a bit of pattern. I really like that. Um, and I think I'm going to have some down here just in that area, area there too. And I think I'm going to leave that be because I don't want to um, over overdo it. Um, that's fine. So I just kept playing with my page. Now I've got my bird um, that I stamped earlier and I want that to go there, something like that. I just love how that looks. Isn't that beautiful? And then I've got this quote that I printed out for last week as well. I had a spare one because if you remember, I couldn't decide between the Seth Apter baked texture um, or black. Um, so um, I just want that to go something like that. But I do want to um, just use some of the um, antiquing cream just to go around the edge, just to grunge it up because it just looks um, too, too white. I'm just going to glue my quote down just there like that. Um, this is Fabri-Tac that I've put into a fine nozzle bottle. I got asked the question last week where I, what brand it is. These are just a cheap set from China. Um, I got them in a set of, um, oh, I don't know, about half a dozen of them, um, maybe 10 um, for a couple of pounds. And they're quite good because they've got this rubber cap that just goes over, over the top. Um, the other one that I've got, here we go, has got um, a pin in the top and quite often the pins get stuck and then they um, they bend. This was a branded one. I can't remember the brand and I haven't been able to find it. So, so far this one is actually working better. And to finish the page off, I'm just going to um, use my metallic leafing pen just to add a gold border. And I'm going to do this on both sides. I want gold on the other side um, as well. I love that page exactly how it is but I've just got the urge to add um, some leaves to it so I'm using my embossing stamp pad um, again and I just want to add some just in this corner here and if it doesn't work and I don't like it then you know I can um, remove it. I found some more gold I thought I'd bought some a, a while ago um, I couldn't find it a minute ago so let's have a look oh I've missed a spot I really like that um, actually and I'm going to do this bit by bit um, and just work my my way up just on, on this area here I'm finished with this page and I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I just love it. I love all the music notes um, in the background. Um, a bird does not sing because it has an answer. So, you know, the music notes um, are just absolutely perfect. I love all the gold. I'm really pleased with the leaf de detail that I've put around the edge as well. Um, and of course, you know, I finished it off with the gold metallic leafing pen. Now, I've used the gold metallic leafing pen around the outside of the back as well and I know what I want to do with this to tie it all together. So I think I'm going to work on this next. I've got a homemade stencil that I had when we were doing the bokeh technique and I've also put some more of that iridescent gold paint um, out here and I'm just going to stamp some gold circles in the background just to tie um, the gold in from the other side. I'm just going to have to be careful that I don't move this. And this this is going to take a couple of coats as well to cover up um, the busyness of the page that's underneath. Um, so I'm just going to randomly stamp some circles over my background um, and then I've got um, another idea as well. 
So I'm just going to carry on doing this and I shall just take it off really carefully and dry in between. So we'll do it one layer at a time, dry and then go over it um, again. So let me just take this off really carefully and then just dry that with my heat tool to dry and I've been careful to dry this as well because I don't want it smudging. Now I really like how that looks but I do want a slightly heavier layer so I am just going to position it back down if I can find where, where I had it. There we go, that will do and just give it um, another another coat and then I'm going to leave it because I do want some of the detail showing through from um, underneath just um, not quite quite so much. So I'm just going to keep moving um, my stencil around like this um, until I've covered my page as much as um, I want to. Um, and what I want to do now, let's just grab um, another stencil. I've got um, a Stabilo All Pencil and I'm just going to go round the outside of the circles like this so that I can um, whoops a daisy smudge a border. Let me just get my rubber and rub rub that mistake out quick. There we go, sorted, gone. So I've just gone round all of my circles and now I'm just using a blending stump just to smudge um, that stabilo all. There we go. Just being really loose about it. So that's how that looks. I just absolutely love it. I just think it's beautiful and it's tied the gold in from the back. Now, I just want to do one last thing. I've got some of the um, Deco Art Media Crackle Glaze here and a makeup sponge. And what I am going to attempt to do is just put some, in fact, that's not going to work. That's gone a bit thick. Um, let me just scoop some out onto, onto here, there we go, like that, that should be um, enough. Let me just put the lid back on, there we go, I don't want that going all, all horrid. And I'm just going to tap some onto a sponge and I don't know whether this is going to work by doing it um, this way. So I'm going to start off with the larger circles and I'm just going to tap some of that glaze on like this and we'll just see whether it works I mean it might not but um, nothing ventured nothing gained and um, you know if um, we don't get any crackle we'll get um, a nice varnish finish which will just add more texture um, anyway I'm not sure whether you can see this but I have got some crazing um, going on inside these circles I really like that they're very very fine so what I want to try and do is I'm just going to put my template down and I've put some of the teal paint here on my palette can you see that there and I'm just going to add a tiny bit um, inside the circle like this there we go that's um, exposing that more and then I'm going to rub it um, off and just see if we can get the teal to sink into the cracks um, just to expose them a bit more and just tie in some more of that blue. I might need a, a damper baby wipe. Let's have a look. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, I just love that look. So I'm going to do that to all of these circles. I've ended up going over all of these circles again with um, another layer of blue paint followed by another layer of the crackle glaze um, and again I've got some really fine crackles they're really starting to define themselves now but what I am going to do is just try going over with another layer of the gold paint um, just to see if um, the gold will expose the crackles um, any more and leave the blue behind let's just have a look and um, see what effect that gives. It's just experimenting here. It's just so much fun. So here's my finished piece of art. I just love this. I've also gone um, around it again with the Rust-Oleum metallic, uh, metallic leafing pen and I just love the look that that gives. But let me just see if I can show you some of the um, crackling, the crazing. If I tilt it, can you, can you see it? It's more visible in some areas than others, but it's a really pretty um, effect. The crackles on, on the 
these circles here are much finer than the crackles that um, I achieved when I did the um, experiment the other day. I'll leave the link to um, the full-blown crackle medium video because I tested five different products in in that particular video um, but I just think that's gorgeous now the background the busy background started off um, when we did the squeegee art last year um, I had another go after I'd finished with the squeegee at trying it with um, a store card so I tried um, one of one of these um, and it didn't turn out anywhere near as well well at least I didn't think it did I mean the colors are just absolutely beautiful um, and so that's where that has come from and of course this is the other side and I just think this is gorgeous as well um, I just think by using the PVA as a crackle medium I just love the fact that I've got that weathered wood um, look by doing it that way and I'm so glad that I just went one step further as well and added the gold leaf um, the gold leaves because I just think that has added so much to that beautiful beautiful page and I love um, the stamp as well from Art by Marlene and of course that um, started off as um, a piece when we were doing the Osnat um, Zadok work last year that's what that was inspired by um, so you know it's made a really really beautiful image so let me pop this back in my journal um, and we'll see how it looks there here we are here's this piece back in my journal and I've decided to um, pop it back in the center of this spread like this I just love how that looks and I love it um, against this craft paper background as well this is just um, a piece of old packaging paper and I think um, that I'm going to have to be really careful about what I do with this piece in the background I'm thinking that I might add a couple of pockets um, but I don't want to overdo that there so I'm going to put my thinking cap on I'm not going to do any more today so I look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret the new recycle repurpose um, reuse prompt of course I've just used um, old backgrounds to create my piece today and of course the leftover quote from last week um, just a reminder you know the bird was from a leftover um, background as was the original cover as well um, but anything goes interpret this prompt in any way you like um, for instance if you wanted to um, upcycle something like a glass jar a coffee jar then feel free to do so if you want to do more of an art journal page with old backgrounds then that's absolutely fine you know use your scraps it really really this is open to interpretation and very very versatile so if you enjoyed the project that I did today as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up because it really does let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and let me know what you think in the comments below because you know the only way that I can see who's been to visit me is by the comments that you leave so take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now